Welcome to Let's Talk Portsmouth, a new communications enterprise developed by the City of Portsmouth's Marketing and Communications Division. If you're interested in Portsmouth news and information, public concerns, and other relevant topics that could impact your life, Let's Talk Portsmouth is the podcast for you. We'll talk city business, including interviews with city administrators, hold discussions with civic and community organizations, and converse with newsmakers from around the state on topics close to home and heart. Now, here's your host, Sharon Hoggart. Hello, everyone out there in podcast land. So happy you guys decided to join us. I'm Sharon Hoggart, hailing from the historic city of Portsmouth, Virginia, and the city's Department of Marketing and Communications. Welcome to Let's Talk Portsmouth. On today's issue of Let's Talk Portsmouth, we're going to celebrate career and technical education in our interview with Dr. Eli Bracey, Superintendent for Portsmouth Public Schools. We're going to give Dr. Bracey an opportunity to tell you more about his background during our interview. So keep it locked on that dial. I've always wanted to say that. It's not radio, but I still wanted to say that. But first, we're going to take a listen to this important message. Stand by. Portsmouth Fire Rescue and Emergency Services is hiring, and we need you. Become a firefighter with the city of Portsmouth. We have career opportunities for paramedics, EMTs, military veterans, and career options for recent college graduates. Visit our recruitment page at fire.portsmouthva.gov. Portsmouth Fire Rescue and Emergency Services needs you. Okay, you're listening to Let's Talk Portsmouth, and we're welcoming Dr. Eli Bracey to the podcast. We're so delighted that you took the time out of your schedule to join us. Um, But before we start the interview questions, we'd like to do a little icebreaker. So, Dr. Bracey, if you will, tell us a little more about your background. Where were you educated? And what position did you hold prior to coming to Portsmouth Public Schools? Okay, well, good morning, and thank you for, for having me this morning here on the podcast. Um, I am originally from North Carolina, Weldon, North Carolina, which is about an hour and a half um, from here. I um, was educated in Kentucky at Kentucky State University in Frankfort, Kentucky, where I received my bachelor's degree. I received a master's in school counseling from North Carolina Central University, um, master's in education administration from North Carolina A&T State University, and my doctorate from Nova Southeastern University. So prior to joining Portsmouth Public Schools, I was a superintendent in the district that I was educated in, Weldon City Schools, for 10 years. So this is my seventh year here in Portsmouth, and I've thoroughly enjoyed it as um, this is my 17th year as being a, a superintendent, and a lot has changed during that time. But, I mean, I look forward to uh, our discussions as we get into some some of the questions about some of our programs. Mm -hmm. Dr. Bracey, this is just off the cuff here. Uh, Did you ever um, teach in the classroom setting? I was a school counselor. Okay. Um, I I made my way into education by way of um, being a, uh, at the time, it was a guidance counselor. We now refer to that profession as a school counselor. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, so I was a school counselor for for two years, and then I went into administration. I went into assistant principalship. So, as I mentioned, I, I was I've been a superintendent for seventeen years. I've been in school administration in some capacity for twenty three years. Okay, well, we're going to give you your props this morning because you guys do a terrific job, and it, we know here lately it's been difficult to be an educator and be in the, in the school system. It's been really difficult. Mm-hmm. So we applaud you for the work that you do, and we wanted to just um, approach this subject approach this subject with you this morning. The whole country's been watching how different school districts have handled teaching and remote learning during the pandemic. Portsmouth Public Schools continue this mission even after the schools were forced forced to close. So can you give us a quick update on how PPS is faring during this ongoing pandemic? I think we're doing well. Um, you know, we have uh, incredible teachers, staff, administrators who have worked tirelessly to keep our instruction going. And also we have staff that have been working to keep our students as safe as possible in schools 
during this difficult time um, when we invited them to come back into the buildings. You know, our students and our, our our parents they've been they've been very resilient. You know, they've worked they work with us and they understand that this is just our new normal for right now. Mm-hmm. And we're, we're grateful for them as well as the families that have partnered with us. You know, we're hanging into that, but it's, it's, of course, as you know, it's, it's a lot that they have to adjust to and mm-hmm. know that they're, they're ready to get back to the way we were prior to the, the pandemic. So we want to get back to where we were during the pre pandemic operations before we got that call on March 20, mm-hmm. March 13th. Um, 2020 to say you have to go virtual. You know, school school will be closed for for two weeks, but the two weeks ended up being almost a year and a half. Wow. So, you know, we're just trying working now to help our uh, students and our families and our staff really get adjusted to being back uh, in session five days a week mm-hmm. as we once were. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, you're here to talk to us today about um, Career and Technical Education Month, which is celebrated in February. What does this observance mean for students, teachers, parents, school administrators, and others interested in education? Well, you know, this is an opportunity for us really to put the spotlight on our CTE programs. You know, I'm going to say CTE, which is our Career in Technical Education. So I know how people are with acronyms, so I just wanted to make sure that they understood, you know, what that is. Um, you know, we often talk about college as the next step for, for students after graduation, and that is great. But, you know, we also have an amazing um, programs with our um, CTE, um, with the career opportunities right after high school. And I think that's important because one of the things that, that we realize is that all of our students, you know, are not are not going to a university or college right out of high school. So we want to make sure that we provide them with the necessary tools that they need while in high school, if that's the route that they want to take. So what our CTE program does is just, you know, sort of fosters those opportunities for our students. So right after, right after high school, if they're ready to jump into their careers, you know, we provide that uh, pathway for them. I wanted to ask you, even with this pathway that, uh, because everybody's not going to go to college, just that's true. Is it still a good idea for parents to kind of steer their children toward this type of education and to take a technical uh, and engineering STEM approach when they go to college? Is it still, is that a good idea? Or should we let the children just figure it out for themselves? You, I think you really have to, um, you know, find out what the students' interests are. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, because I think, you know, you know, we want a lot for our kids. You know, yeah, I would, I would like for my kids to, to go into STEM or medical prof- professions, but that's not something that, that they chose to do. You know, for some reason, my, my kids wanted to go in education. I mean, go figure. I, I, wonder, <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder why. But, you know, we really have to give them the opportunity to decide what it is that they want to do. And then as parents, and as teachers, we support them um, in that endeavor. But you know, when we start looking at new programs that we want to add to our CTE um, pathways, you know, we survey the students. Mm-hmm. You know, as educators, you know, and professionals, you know, we we think we know what professions and what courses we need to offer. But really, we do a survey, and the kids will come back and let us know, hey. This is what we're interested in. And then we provide that for them. Okay. Wish I had talked to you back in 2011. But anyway, that's another story for another podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Portsmouth Public Schools has an extensive career and technical education program division-wide. Tell our audience about the program and how does it prepare students for the workforce and or college? Well, through the division's extensive uh, CTE program, you know, high school students can get an early start on their dream careers you know, by getting access to the skills and the, le- the learning needed to excel in these career pathways. Um, sort of, you know, what we talked about earlier, you know, just putting it out there for them mm-hmm. um, when they're, so we can make sure that they are aware of what we have and they can share what their interests are. But our students not only learn, um, they not only earn a high school credit, but they also earn, you know, those sought out, those highly sought after industry credentials. Mm-hmm. And I think that's one of the, the key points to our CTE program. 
because you know getting those credentials is is something that you're going to need to be hired or retain your job or even looking at uh, promotions down the line. And I think that has been one of the greatest successes that we've had is that not only are our students in these programs, but when they complete them, you know, they have the certification that that goes along with that. And you know, our CTE pathways, you know, they they make sure that students are successful after graduation. And as you mentioned, whether they choose to go into the workforce or if they want to continue their, um, they want to go to college or university level, they can, but it also helps them further their careers. And, you know, one of the things that we've done too, to, um, to sort of put the spotlight on CTE, you know, this week, this month is, um, of course, February is, is when you also have students that are athletes um, signing their letters of intent mm -hmm. for scholarships and so forth. So what we do with our CTE programs and our students that complete those, we we have a sign-in day for them. You know, we do it uh, later because we want to make sure that we capture all of our students that have gone through that in the fall and into the spring, the second semester. So one of the things that we do, we, we, we do a sign-in day for them. And at that time, you know, we have our uh, our CTE uh, coordinator along with the students and their families. And then they some of them already have jobs. So we have the employer come in and and, and sit with them. And it's, it's a great occasion because it brings spotlight and attention to our students and to our program. Not only are they going through it and receiving the credentials, but here's proof because they have their they have the jobs and some of the employees will give them like a, a, a bonus, a signing bonus just for, mm -hmm. for completing the work and coming on. And that's, that's really exciting to the, as you can imagine, to the students mm -hmm. and the parents. Okay. So, you know, we, we really have seen that be a, a positive um, measure for us and even for recruitment as well. Okay. Does the Division Star-Based Victory Program have a role in the CTE curriculum? And if Star-Based Victory plays a role, how does that work? Well, it, it lays the groundwork for a lot of our students, but this it focuses on the careers in the science, technology, engineering, and math, and looking at those those STEM careers. And one of the, 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 the key pieces to that is what that program does, it brings in STEM professionals to actually speak directly to our students and explain it to them what it will take to have a profession to in, in the area of STEM. And that has been very beneficial because when you hear it from someone that's out there doing the work, it, it, it shares a different uh, lens to our students because, you know, you have your professors that are teaching this to you, but when you see someone come in who's actually in that work, that application means so much more. And we also, with our Starbase program, share with them, you know, during summer camps uh, that they can take of their choice, you know, if they're interested in um, drones, um, if they're inter interested in the, the aerial space, you know, we have those programs for them, even uh, coding as well for some of our younger students. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's not immediately tied to it, but it is closely aligned to our CTE program. Mm -hmm. Next question, Dr. Bracey, here we go. What is work-based learning and how is it implemented in the career and technical education curriculum? Well, as, as part of the division CTE program, you know, staff connects with an, an interested student and works with them with our, with our work-based learning opportunities. With work-based learning, students can work along aside today's companies, businesses, organizations, and they can receive on-site training and experience. So that not only informs students of the current state of the workforce, but it also gives them high school credit. And of course, you know, I think what's really a good piece to that, it also gives them, um, it, it's, it looks good on the resume. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, when we talk about work-based learning experiences, you know, it, it, this is what it includes. These are some of the areas that it includes. When you look at career, career awareness, where you're talking about job shadowing, service learning, career exploration, when you're looking at, you know, externships, internships, you know, mentorship and the school-based enterprise and uh, career preparation. We're looking at the clinical experience and the cooperative education. 
and then we're looking at the entrepreneurship, which is apprenticeships and supervised um, agricultural experience. So those are some of the examples um, that we have. Mm -hmm. How does the school division staff keep a finger on the business and tech community's pulse to ensure the work-based learning is the most current? Well, to build the CTE program, you know, the school division staff, they work closely with the community to learn what the workforce needs are and and where our skilled workers could thrive. You know, we have a CTE advisory board that's made up of local business, community professionals, uh, teachers, students, administrators, and parents. And the purpose of the advisory committee is to support educators, uh, students, and businesses in the developing and establishing and evaluating of our CTE programs and just to ensure that students are well prepared for the world of work when they venture out. Okay, Dr. Bracey, stand by. Stay with us. We're going to take another short break. Hang in there. Are you considering a career in law enforcement? Sign on today as a Portsmouth police officer and receive up to $1,500 if you're already Virginia certified. We offer a $1,000 allowance for a bachelor's degree and a $500 allowance for an associate's degree on top of your base pay. Officers can also earn additional income on time spent in court and at community events. Visit our website at portsmouthpd.us for more information on how to apply. Okay, we're back. <laughs> we're talking with Dr. Eli Bracey from the Portsmouth Public Schools on this episode of Let's Talk Portsmouth. Do students have any prerequisites before enrolling in the CTE program, Dr. Bracey? Yes, and depending on what pathway you're interested in, you know, there are various prerequisites. So if you're interested in a specific pathway, then, you know, I would suggest that students and parents, you know, reach out to the child school counselor mm -hmm. because they can they can help you know make sure that you're on the right path and that you can plan out your the, your course and of course you can always visit our um, website at ppsk12.us slash cte for more information okay now can high school students enroll in this program as freshmen and continue throughout their high school years how does or how does that work do they come in as a sophomore or junior or can they start as freshmen well, that's the great thing about CTE is that you know you can be involved. You can be inv involved as um, as really as as much as you want. Mm -hmm. You can start you can start taking electives in your freshman year all the way through your senior year, or you can build on those courses and be a completer, which means you have taken all the courses related to that pathway. Mm -hmm. So, what kind of activities will Portsmouth Public Schools participate in during Career and Technical Education Month? Well, this is a, this is really a celebration of our CTE program. So we have promotional materials that are online and social media. You know, also in preparation for this month, you know, we've created new videos for each of our 14 pathways, which highlight our students and staff who are currently in those courses, and they're telling the, their stories directly and what they're doing and how they're learning uh, during the class. And you know you can see all of those videos uh, on our on our CTE web page as well. You know that's one of the reasons also is why I'm here talking to you is to promote the CTE program. And we kicked it off actually last month at our board meeting where we uh, the board passed a resolution for um, dedicating this month for CTE uh, month. Mm -hmm. So. We do that every year so that we can highlight the importance of CTE and what it means to our students and in our school division. So can parents um, enroll their students or students do that themselves? So, and how does that work? Well, you know, not to be a broken record here, but, you know, <laughs> if they're interested, you know, they need to, in any particular um, CTE path or course, they just need to reach out to the counselor and mm -hmm. they will advise them on what they need to do. You know, they are your best resource and can help talk through whatever career goals or even goals you have past graduation to make sure that you're making the right decisions now. Okay. All right, we're getting ready to begin to wrap this episode of Let's Talk Portsmouth. We're going to another commercial break for this important message. Please stand by. 
Since 1969, Portsmouth Behavioral Health Care Services has worked with 39 other community services boards and behavioral health authorities around the state to provide comprehensive services for individuals with mental health, intellectual developmental disabilities, substance abuse, and or co-occurring disorders. Portsmouth residents recognize behavioral health care services as a leader in professional behavioral health care and choose us because of our exceptionally effective, caring, and affordable services. If you, a family member, or a friend ever experience a behavioral health condition, including substance use disorders, know that we are here to help. Our services are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. For more information about our services, call 757-393 8618 or 757-393-8990. Visit PortsmouthVA.gov and click on the drop-down menu under the Government tab. Well, despite all of our efforts and our technical difficulties and a spastic host this morning, we've had a great conversation with Dr. Bracey. Thank you so much for joining us on Let's Talk Portsmouth. Do you have any last thoughts you want to leave with our listening audience about CTE programs or anything with the school system? Sure. I, I just want to thank you for this opportunity to talk about Portsmouth Public Schools and the wonderful options that we have here for students. You know, I also want to thank our CTE team, headed up by our CTE coordinator, Craig Hill, for all their work and leadership in developing and expanding the programs for students. And thank you for the opportunity to share this information with the community and city of Portsmouth as well. So we appreciate thank you. you. We I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, we've come to the end of another episode of our podcast. Thank you for downloading and listening. You can find our podcast wherever you find your favorite podcast. Share Let's Talk Portsmouth with your family and friends. Here's an inspirational thought. Aristotle said, the worst form of inequality is to try to make unequal things equal. Take care. We're out of here. Thanks for listening to Let's Talk Portsmouth, the podcast that's about the city of Portsmouth and our connections around the globe. Listen and download our next episode for more news you can use and information that may just change your perspective. Find our podcast where you find quality podcasts, the Podbean app, Spotify, and Amazon Music Audible. Until next time, take care.